Hello, it is Monday, November 7th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Monday puzzle, of course, which means a nice, simple, approachable, themed crossword. That's what we should that's what we should have in store for us today. I hope so. This will um this is one of the days on which I don't have a huge amount of extra time, so it should go quickly, and that's exactly what I need. And this approachable, gentle themed edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Quartidia File, Overfull Hitbox. And, as always, the inestimable hood monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shulmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support and uh, their help in sustaining this channel and this series. I do very much appreciate that. And if you'd like to join their ranks as benefactors and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. There's a link in the description field underneath the video. And of course, if you follow that link, you can also become a patron at any level and get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And thank you also, of course, to everybody who has done that. Thank you to everybody who, who is a patron of any kind. Uh, it does keep this whole channel going. So thank you for that. Uh, you can also join the Daily Solve Discord chat server in a link uh, found in the description field underneath the video. And do subscribe to the channel, tell a friend, like the videos, all that sort of thing. Thank you so much if you've done any of those. All right, let's get on to the crossword. This is, of course, as I said, a Monday puzzle. It was constructed by Jill Singer, and this is another debut construction. So the first New York Times crossword by Jill Singer. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving. Outstanding. Don't know. It could be great or it could be unpaid, as in an, in, an outstanding invoice. Uh, yeah, maybe it is unpaid because Japanese buckwheat noodle could be udon, I'm pretty sure. And so this would be n. No siree could be nope, maybe. That's very similar to no siree. Not I, maybe? Don't know. Uh, let's try unpaid and see what we can get out of this. What baba ganoush is often served with? Um... What would you often serve baba ganoush with? I mean, pita bread, I guess, is sort of the most obvious thing. You could dip pita bread in baba ganoush. Let's try that and see if that works. Now it makes sense. Not sure about that one. Uh, oh, here's something themed. With 58 across, I'm so nervous. There are blank and then... We have our revealer highlighted as well, 36 across. Why the troubled look? Or a hint to 17, 24, 48, and 58 across. I'm not sure what's going on here. Let's keep looking around. Approximately could be about, maybe? I don't know if I like that. Stunk and Senator Sanders. Well, I would have assumed this to be Bernie. Maybe this isn't unpaid. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I've maybe I've set myself a whole trap here. Clothesline. A hem or something? No. A toothed tool, a saw. There we go. A saw blade has teeth. Rear of a ship, the stern of a ship. No longer in slumberland, you're awake. And a worst case scenario. All right, here we go. This is the corner. This is the corner to start. How many it takes to tango? It takes two to tango, as they say. Prominent feature of an elephant or a dachshund is an ear. Those are large-eared animals. And uh, Turks and Caicos Islands. There we go. Okay, prefix with cycle or code. Unicycle or Unicode. Unicode is a, a um, text encoding standard on uh, computers. Okay, I can't stop thinking about it. There's a B in my bonnet, maybe? With that N-N-E-T? Maybe. Just it's purely based on this NNET, but B in my mind also does mean you're sort of preoccupied. So that does work. Y yeah, Yin's counterpart is Yang. I think this is probably right. Blank have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. The Robert uh, Frost poem, but I have promises to keep and miles to go. Okay, German luxury auto is an Audi. And opposite of Exo is Ento. So, um, you know, anatomically, for instance. Okay, extinct megafauna species whose name derives from the Greek for breast tooth. Uh, mastodon, presumably. presumably. 
The French word for mastodon is how in French you refer to someone being, well, a way, I suppose, you can refer to someone being a giant of their field, you know, political mastodon, you could say in French to indicate a huge presence. You might say a political lion maybe in, in English. All right, clothes lion, clothes line, sorry. So a seam, right, okay. So there we go. I had hem in mind, but seam probably. Had breakfast, say, is eight. And one of the Mannings, okay, well, I don't know why everybody has such strong opinions about them. I don't know enough to know that, but I have heard of Eli Manning, sportsman. Okay, opposite of Baja in Spanish, alta, uh, alta, so high versus low, right, in Spanish. And which trials locale famous, famously Salem, the Salem witch trials in the U.S.? And word with jerk or joint? I'm not sure. What about this? Ward off. You could ward somebody off. You could fend them off. I'm so nervous. There are... Oh, butterflies in my stomach. Oh, maybe this isn't udon, but soba. Did I misremember which one was buckwheat? I must have. Whoops. <laughs> All right. No wonder this whole area was incorrect. Yeah, soba. That does sound right for buckwheat noodles. Okay. So there are butterflies. I'm so nervous. Yes, because butterflies in my stomach refers to um, being nervous. So with 58 across, so butterflies in my stomach. There we go. So these are, we have, I suppose little creatures in, I don't know, either body parts or things we're wearing. I mean, essentially we're looking for animals in things that are expressions, I think is what we're looking at here. Okay. So outstanding. So it wasn't unpaid. No siree. What Baba Goon? Okay, this still could be pita bread, actually. Look at that. Approximately. Estimated? EST? Oh, and Senator Sanders does look like Bernie Sanders. Okay, there we go. So... Now it makes sense. Oh, I see, which is how I feel about this corner here. No siree, uh-uh, you could say. Now it makes sense, aha, there we go. Okay, it's all coming together and now it makes sense. We got another one of those. I needed two of them to reflect the degree to which my understanding has changed up here. So outstanding is not unpaid, but rather superb. And stunk is reeked, something really stunk, it reeked. Word with jerk or joint, a knee jerk or a knee joint, there we go. Marched in an attention-seeking way, paraded, if you sort of strutted. Sunrise direction, the east. Cards worth 1 or 11 in blackjack, those would be aces. And 1 of 16 on a chessboard, each side has 8 pawns, so 16 in total. And a pain could be an ache. And then Edgar's nickname, perhaps Ned, can be a nickname for Edgar, so there we go. Why the troubled look? Oh, what's eat? What's eating you? No. What's bugging you, right? Because we have bugs, bugs in our things here. So uh, butterflies in my stomach, be in my bonnet. And then what is going, ants in my pants, maybe? I can't sit still. Yes, there are ants in my pants. There we go. All right. A nice, simple Monday theme once we actually understood what was going on. Like thick crust, crust rectangular pizza, Sicilian. Sicilian pizza and created could be born, presumably. E pluribus unum, um, out of many, one. And a prefix was a sphere, ionosphere, what an element of the um, atmosphere, I think. And then one in a Freudian trio could be ego, right? So the ego, superego, and id. And how one sends an embarrassing email to the entire office, by mistake, presumably. Yes, indeed. Sound defeat. So this could be a sound defeat, in other words, a complete defeat, or it could be to sound defeat, maybe to sort of sound the, you know, to cry, I surrender or something like that. Not sure. I'll return soon in a text, BRB, be right back. Kind of phone signal that's nearly obsolete. Buzz, is that? Kind of phone signal that's nearly, at why? Flightless Australian birds. Oh, well, here's a, here's a chance to save a bit of time in the uh, reading the clues, reading the clues from yesterday's puzzle at the end. Flightless Ita uh, Austra Italian, Australian birds um, I referred to as emus and was corrected yesterday by, let's see, by Geo488 emus is what I should have said. I actually 
um, did a bit of reading on this, and it does seem as though, as with many words constructed in this way, uh, it, the, the pronunciation is sort of slowly changing over time. Uh, for instance, uh, the name Susie used to be pronounced Siuzi. Uh, we've changed that to Susie because it's just more, it's more natural sort of uh, for many English speakers. Um, there were several other words that once would have been pronounced in this way, like emu, uh, that have changed and now sound normal to us without uh, that particular sound. Um, although I will endeavor to remember that <laughs> that this is uh, particularly preferred to by Australians as based on the, the article I read to be emus. And I will, um, it was not an intentional um incitement. Okay, anyway, a sound of defeat is a rout, and a kind of phone signal that's nearly obsolete is what? Biz oh, a busy, a busy signal, calling somebody on a phone right, because that really does primarily apply to landlines, which are less and less used. Okay, Hanukkah money is what? It's, I want to say gelt, which I suspect is, 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 related to the same word as guilt from gold? That's my guess. Skill. Mm, what is that? Facebook and Pinterest are apps, I suppose. Not really, but they have apps. I guess that means there are apps called Facebook and Pinterest. Record of drinks ordered. A bar tab. There we go. Oh, ability is skill. There we go. It didn't show much ability right there, did I? Dr. Scholl's product, uh, Dr. Scholl's ma makes shoe insoles. Okay, it has the same function as option on a Mac, an alt key, I suppose, on Windows, a Windows keyboard. And attacks is besets, right? I've been attacked, I've been beset. Stage name for rapper Tracy Lauren Marrow must be iced tea. There we go. And an extra amount for a waiter, you might tip your server. And phys ed gym class for physical education, all right, or PE. Get your blank out Rolling Stones album. Get your Yaya's out is the name of a Rolling Stones album. And a DC ball club informally. Is it the Nats for the Nationals? Let's try that and see. School for Aspiring Engineers. MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Famous school in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And where India is, of course, it's on the continent of Asia. And an intelligence organization could be the National Security Administration or agency. Okay, something a bird or celebrity might do. Tweet, I guess. A bird tweets and then a celebrity uses Twitter, I suppose. Uh, cloth to dry off with could be a towel, of course. Language suffix ease many languages. The names of many languages end with ease in English. And color of unbleached linen a crew. Okay, there we go. So linen before it's been dyed. Or sorry, before it's been bleached and then, and then dyed, I suppose. Uh, what hips don't do per a Shakira hit? lie, I guess. Hips don't lie. And world record, an atlas, right. And then are we there yet is the stereotypical cry from children in the back of a car. 6362 or 76. A set. Oh, right. Those are, those are scores of a, of a set um, of, of games in, you know, sports. Okay. So bet noir, there we go. Sort of um, I don't know, Problem Child, the bete noir of film or something. I don't know, famously rambunctious actor, I guess. So here we go. There it is. Okay, so a rough start today. <laughs> didn't didn't equip myself brilliantly in this corner over here. Outstanding, I thought was unpaid. That allowed me to uh, misconstrue this Japanese buckwheat noodle uh, bit here. And that the, just, it was just error piled upon error. Um, fortunately, this corner was a bit more straightforward for me, and I was able to work myself back to this and sort it out. So that worked out fine. Uh, but yes, definitely fumbled fumbled this quite a bit. Not what I not what I uh, look for on a, on Monday morning, but that's how it went. And um, let me know how you fared. So let's quickly go over our theme. We had our "What's bugging you" theme. I can, um, why the troubled look, you might ask. And, and the, I see. So why the troubled look and the answer to any of those, uh, the answer to that question is going to be any of these. So you might say, I'm so nervous. There are butterflies in my stomach. Or I can't stop thinking about it. There's a bee in my bonnet. Or I can't sit still. There are ants in my pants. All of which are answers to the question, what's bugging you? Ants 
There are various bugs in our things. So there we go. And that was the crossword for today. A very nice debut puzzle by Jill Singer. Well done to her for her um, first appearance on the in the New York Times crossword. And I will read just a couple of these uh, comments from clues from yesterday's puzzle. We'll do that fairly quickly. Okay. Uh, Remy explains that Dayenu, uh, which was referenced yesterday regarding the Seder, means this would have been enough. It is sung at the Passover meal, the Seder, when listing all the things Hebrews are redevable to God for. I'm summarizing, but for example, had he brought us out of Egypt, but not split the sea open for us, this would have been enough. Had he split the sea open for us, but not given us the Torah, this would have been enough. Dayenu, etc. Uh, so there we go. That's, that's, that's very interesting and very, very nice. So thank you, Remy. Nix Hicks explains that uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, is a progressive nervous system disease that affects nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord, causing loss of muscle control, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. So there we go, that's ALS. And uh, Dragon Traces points out it's known also as MND, a shortened form of motor neuron disease, familiar to many as the condition with which Stephen Hawking was diagnosed. All right, so we'll need to remember the relationship between all those, those uh, acronyms and full words. Okay, uh, Stephen Giblin points out, I never went back to 108 down, which whose answer was Behar. Joy Behar is one of the hosts of the ABC daytime talk show, The View. So there we go. Um, all right. And finally, Evil King 926 points out, I never went back to 95 down, Bop It, which is the toy with the blue pole handle. Pull is in uh, pull is in quotes because on the toy itself it literally says pull next to the handle. All right, I have never um, I have I've never used a bop it or or played with one or, or or what have you. So yes, I'm not surprised I didn't recognize that. And then I guess I completely forgot to go back to it. So all right, I will take your word for it. Thank you, Evil King ninety six, and thank you to everybody who left uh, comments uh, correcting me regarding yesterday's puzzle. And that's that for today's video. I'll be back tomorrow for the Tuesday puzzle, which will be another, hopefully, another relatively approachable themed crossword. I hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care.